With the rising cost of the Dimensity 9400 and Snapdragon 8 Elite, flagship phones are getting more expensive. There's no way to get a flagship phone for less than $550 anymore. But is there really no way we can get a cheap flagship phone? Realme has released a GT7 Pro. It helps with the dream of buying a flagship phone for $500. Even if the global version will be a bit more expensive, it's still the cheapest Snapdragon 8 Elite phone available, I am sure. If you want to try this award's the cheapest Snapdragon 8 Elite phone, Geekwheels will help you get the GT7 Pro delivered to your home. And the region lock issue has been resolved, so feel free to buy it. The purchase link is below the video. So is there a catch here? There must be a reason why the GT7 Pro is cheaper than other, right? First of all, the camera. The telephoto camera is downgraded to IMAX AA2 and ultra-wide camera is budget phone level. Then wireless charging disappeared and USB is still 2.0. These are the things that make it not as good as other flagship phones. On the bright side, it has upgraded all the major features. For example, the fingerprint recognition has been upgraded to ultrasonic, the waterproof rating has been upgraded to IP68, and the camera module has been moved to the top left corner. Whether it looks good or not, it's your call but not blocking your finger does improve the experience. Overall, the GT7 Pro is flawless. Realme understands how to keep costs under control to create a flagship killer. And this phone is their latest masterpiece. The GT7 Pro's screen uses Samsung's latest Equal Square OLED Plus panel. This screen is usually used in foldable phones. Thanks to the poleless technology, which means that the polarizer has been removed, the brightness has been increased dramatically, and the power consumption has been reduced as well. The GT7 Pro can now really be called a flashbang with a high brightness mode that also reaches 2000 nits, which is outrageous. So what's the price? The uh, viewing angle has gotten worse, but I think it's acceptable as it doesn't really affect data experience that much. High performance has always been the main selling point of the GT series. This year's Snapdragon 8 Elite is particularly powerful, so the GT7 Pro has dipped its toe in the water. Both the benchmark scores and the game experience are much better than the previous gen. Using the Xiaomi 15 as a benchmark, the GT7 Pro surpasses it in many ways. For example, jitter and temperature control. Unfortunately, our monitoring program went wrong. There was no way to accurately measure its gaming power consumption. But estimating it based on percentage of battery, the GT7 Pro also takes the lead. The 6,500 million battery puts all phones so far behind. The longer it's used, the bigger the gap between it and other phones will be. 120 watt of wireless charging will get it to full battery in about half an hour. It's not as fast as you'd expect, but there's no phone faster than it. I mean, the recent release of phones. Game space has all the features except the bypass charging as well, so gamers don't need to get a gaming phone specifically. This phone has conquered all mobile games right now. Photography is definitely not something the GT7 Pro excels at. As I just said, its telephoto camera compared to the GT5 Pro has also been downgraded. Not only is the sensor size smaller, but you can no longer take macro photos with this lens, sadly. But this new sensor is not really weak, and just by looking at the image quality, it doesn't pull too far ahead compared to other flagships. Telephoto capabilities are enhanced as the focal length has been changed from 65mm to 73mm. With the help of AI and in-sensor zoom, the image quality is acceptable even when zoomed 6 times. So just looking at the main and telephoto cameras, the GT7 Pro can really compete with the flagship phones that cost more. There's not much to say about the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. Even the powerful ISP and AI can't save the poor image quality. Only when there's enough light, the image quality is acceptable. So that's also one of the prices. Both the main telephoto cameras are capable of recording 4K video, except for the ultra wide angle camera and the front camera. Switching between the two cameras is also smooth, except for one problem. The noise control on the telephoto camera is something terrible. For example, in this footage, the noise is sometimes bad and sometimes it gets back to normal. I'm sure it's just a bug and a system upgrade should fix it, right, Realme? As we all know, Realme UI is no different from ColorOS, so yes, it's another Android phone with iOS on it. Actually, I don't care. iOS has copied a lot of Android's features, isn't it? We'll always get the latest and greatest features and the ultimate beneficiary will always be us. So I think it's a good thing that the features are similar, as for the legal issue, leave it to the lawyers. Bravo Realme, the brand just created another flagship, easy like a snap. 
The GT7 Pro will undoubtedly be a very popular phone, not because of how perfectly the specs are, but because of the perfect price. You know it's not easy to make money, only a Realme always remembers us who want such phones, so that we can also use flagship phones that are not too expensive. I'm looking forward to the Redmi K80 next because with the GT7 Pro here first, it's bound to surprise us big time with its price too. Remember to check out Geek Wheels for your favorite phone and we're from Kism China. We'll see you next time.